OK, because, as I say, the natural competitive advantages that we have in this country, you don't want those lost. You have natural competitive advantages in this country. The problem is, if they're taken away, you need to be able to hedge your bets by having operations in other parts of the world. No, that's absolutely correct. Look, we are a global organisation. We operate in 100 countries. I have options. And, 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 you know, we've made a couple of major acquisitions in the last couple of years, and both of those major acquisitions, more than a one and a half billion Aussie dollars, that's gone overseas, that's gone to North America. And there's a reason for that, because that market is very attractive for Orica. It's also much more competitive. It's easier for me to get my manufacturing folks, the engineers, the demand, the customers, it's all there and supported by policy. So that's another clear message to say, if the policies are predictable, if the policies are favorable to manufacturing, there will be further investment in Australia. So then go to Cyanco, because I want to go to that particular acquisition you've made, which is in the United States. So not only will you be the biggest manufacturer of uh, explosives in the world for industry and for mining, but then also um, for cyanide, which is key in the gold extraction business, isn't it? Absolutely. And look, I'm very, very bullish on gold. I mean, not just the fact that gold is at uh, record prices today. It's just that there's not enough supply coming for gold and there's very strong demand not just from central banks, but also as in, in manufacturing, for example, as a precious metal. So gold is a very attractive commodity. As you've said, we have become now the biggest supplier of mining services, as well as specialty chemicals for extraction of gold in the world. We have become number one there. And the fact that we have now access to two new assets in North America, which are exposed to very competitive natural gas there. By the way, the gas price in the US that we pay is under four Australian dollar equivalent. So that's a very, very competitive place to manufacture. And what do you pay for that gas here in Australia right now? Look, I, I, I can't give you my own gas pricing contracts. These are long-term contracts. But just take the, the reference number of the gas price cap of 12 Aussie dollars. So that's already a 300% increase on what I pay here in, 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 for example, the United States. OK, so one of the things when you make those acquisitions, you always look at the return on capital. And a lot of people have talked and learned about return on capital with supermarkets in recent times. But you also have to look at that. So the return on capital, given the fact your gas prices are cheaper, given the fact that there's encouragement from government, state and federal in the United States for you to do business, is your return on capital better in America or is it better in Australia? It's far superior in, the, in North America. And that's why all the focus that we have spent the last year or so has been in scaling up our business in North America and the growth that uh, brings and the opportunities for growth that come with that. So, so that being the case, Australia still, because it's your home, because it's a place where you do your business, where you employ most of your people right now, it is still strategically important. But the real message goes to government to make certain that those advantages we spoke about earlier do not disappear. So this goes to industrial relations. This goes to energy policy. It goes to so many different areas in which Orica is affected. Absolutely. Look, I mean, we are at the forefront of decarbonizing our operations here in Australia. We have the safeguard mechanism we've been leading in, in terms of taking down our own carbon dioxide footprint in all the manufacturing facilities we have in Australia. The products we make go into the food industry, they go into the fertilizer industry, they go into the mining industry, they go into the beverage industry. These are critical. It's not easy to import those products. So sovereign manufacturing for Orica in Australia is crucial. I'm committed to this, yeah, but I need a little bit of help. And I do not ask for subsidy. I just ask for cost competitive and an easy operating environment, policy certainty so that I know, because my investments, they will continue for the next 30, 40, 50 years. We've been around for 150 years. We intend to be here for a very long time. So we need just the right policy encouragement to be confident that Australia is a good place to continue to do business for Orica. Sanjeev Gandhi, always great to chat to you and many thanks for your time today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.